Zach Laws of Gold Derby here with Brian Cavanaugh-Jones. He's one of the producers of Amazon's Honey Boy. Uh, you know, and this is really one of the most deeply personal films of the year. Uh, it's written by Shia LaBeouf, who also stars in it, and it's based so much on his own life. Um, talk a little bit about working with Shia on a project that was so uh, deeply personal uh, to him. Uh, yeah, you know, what What I thought was so incredible was that it is it is deeply personal to him, but it is really accessible to a lot of people and it has moved a lot of people. So when Alma sent the script to me first, uh, she asked me to read it, and I read it um, the night she sent it, and I and I cried. I you know I I I think everybody that has uh, parent issues um, can engage in some way in sort of the the loss and pain that Chaya went through, and and it is profoundly personal, but I think also really amazing in terms of how it is. Um, so universal and as and and certainly we've seen that with audiences audiences have loved it so and and i was a joy to work with i think he is um uh he is as prepared and and intelligent and incredible an actor as i've seen and and it took a lot it took a lot for him to go through this process um and to play his dad and uh and there were certainly times that were fraught and challenging and Hard, but I think he was just really open and honest in that process. It was pretty amazing to watch that process and watch him with other actors and how generous and incredible he was with Noah and also uh, with Alma. He was just, they, you know, he was really available and accessible and 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 intent on doing the work. It was wonderful to watch. It was incredible. I think one of the things that is uh, most fascinating about this film is um, how massive the scale is in some aspects. You know, I mean, it's it's a tiny uh, personal story, and yet, you know, there's a lot of ground that gets covered in this movie. There's a lot of intricate set pieces. Um, what were some of the challenges that you as a producer faced in getting this movie made on the uh, budget that you had. Yeah, sure. I think this movie was sort of an impossibility across the board. We didn't have enough money. We didn't have enough days. We made it in 19 days. Um, and I credit the HODs we got to work with, and I really credit Alma and my producing partners, in, in the, particularly Alma, just in terms of the incredible ambition that she had and her take no prisoners, sort of uh, never take no for an answer um, attitude. I think that's the the sort of heartbeat of any indie movie, but Alma was was our captain and was incredible in swinging at everything. So, so you know, look, we got lucky and we also had just a great group of HODs, our DP, Natasha, our production designer, JC, our, you know, our costumes, and everybody was on point on this movie and was doing it out of passion and love. And I think that, I think though that we, there were things that we got the opening of the movie, we got one take of, so it had to work and, and thank the heavens it did. Cause otherwise we would have been in a lot of trouble. So I certainly credit everybody on the crew. I really credit almost sort of ambition and unstoppableness. You've mentioned uh, Alma Harrell a couple of times, uh, the director of this movie. She's somebody who's made uh, some documentaries and, and shorts and things like that before, but this is her feature narrative debut. Um, talk a little bit about working with uh, someone who you know is experienced as a director, but this is her first time doing something like this. Uh, what were some of those experiences like, and how do you as a producer help facilitate somebody like that? You know, um, it was certainly Alma's first, it's her narrative debut. Her documentaries are incredible, and she's also done a lot of music videos and a lot of commercials. So it's, she's, she's, she is as seasoned a first-time filmmaker as they come. Um, so there, there weren't a lot of challenges. She knew exactly what she wanted. She came with a real vision and clarity of how she could get it. What I love about Alma, though, is that, she is so open to the moment, and I certainly think that comes from her. So, you know, there were a lot of times when, when Noah and Shia would want to find something on the day that everybody had to adjust to, and I think that was the purpose of this movie, right? This movie was 
really alive. I certainly feel like when I watch it, it's really alive. And I and and I saw Alma adjust to that all the time. And and on the fly with her camera team and everybody else, figure out how to find those moments. And I I think those moments are what makes this movie. So um, she was. There wasn't much greenness in the process. She was she was seasoned and ready to go and knew exactly what she wanted. I think she got it across the board. I certainly felt like that too in the edit process. She was uh, an incredible editor and and I'm all. It's you know the hardest thing for a filmmaker to do is be once you have a vision to shift and change and move with that process. She was always willing to be really self-critical and say that's not working. How do we make it better? Um, and I think that's the reason the movie is as good as it is, because she and the editors found every one of those moments and, and uh, were willing to be really self-critical in, in what worked and what didn't. Uh, let me just uh, dive into this uh, more on a uh, micro and macro level. You know, as a producer, you've, you've done a lot of independent films before and you've worked with a lot of different people. Um, uh, how do you see your job as a producer in terms of helping facilitate talent like a, an Alma Harrell and a Shia LaBeouf to be able to, you know, get the best work possible and, and to be creative uh, with as little hindrance as possible? I think it's a really great question. I, I am. Um, question. I, for, for me, my job, I think, is to create as safe and clean and comfortable a sort of space for actors and directors to get to go play in the sandbox that they want. I think that that's, especially sometimes the budget that's this small, it's really hard to do, but I, I hope we did. I, I certainly feel like at least when we got on set with, when you could cancel out all the noise and go to work, I think that, that, that the set and, and, and what we set up for, for everybody was to play in a really safe sandbox. So that was the that was certainly what I try and do across the board. You did have a little bit of help uh, in that, uh, you know, you had uh, uh, some other producers working on this film, uh, like uh, Anita Gao and, and Chris uh, Leggett and uh, Daniela Taplin Lundberg, all of whom I spoke with yesterday. Um, uh, does it help kind of having people to uh, divide duties or, or work together with? I mean, how, how does that work when you've, when you've got people uh, uh, multiple people on set like that. Yeah, we um, it was such a family, and Alma is also a producer on this movie, and we could have done. This movie was produced by five producers. I certainly am not. Uh, uh, it, it was it was created by a tribe, and I think that was sort of the mantra from the start with this movie: is that the only way to pull it off and be this ambitious was to to have a lot of really smart people who cared deeply about it, and and as ambitiously as we could. So, so I love it. It was so fun. And everybody on this set was really like-minded in what we were trying to do and how to pull it off. So Anita, Daniela, Alma, Chris, like it was incredible. And I, and, and Chris has worked with Alma for a long time. And I, 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 this was my first time working with Chris. I've worked with, with Daniela before. Chris was outrageous in terms of some of the magic that he could pull off. And I certainly think, from Alma and Chris's commercial work, they they pulled every favor they could. We all did, but they were incredible in terms of getting some of those huge huge ambitions and figuring out how to get them at a price. Uh, you've also uh, produced quite a few movies. Uh, a lot of them are coming out this year. <laughs> Indeed, uh, you've had a very busy 2019, but I guess that means you've also had a very busy few years in, in putting all these movies together. What do you look for in projects that you're going to devote your time to? Um, what do I look for? You know, I, I, the nice part is I have a lot of partners. My partner that I work with here uh, at Automatics named Fred Berger, and we could, I couldn't possibly make all these movies without him and, and, um, and our whole team. I, I don't know. You know, the funny thing is I look for things that really moved me. I got to read Honey Boy on a Thursday night and called on a Friday morning saying how much I loved it. The, sort of joy of what I get to do is I get to read other people's passions and decide if I'm equally as passionate. And, and we love making a lot of stuff because it, it, uh, it allows us to really see lots of different visions of filmmakers and, and buy in and, and create those safe spaces for them. So I, I, I am so excited about being 
sort of prolific in that process and getting to find lots of different uh, filmmakers and lots of different visions and lots of different stories that I can fall in love with and help support. Well, tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up next. Um, uh, we have uh, The Wolf Hour with Naomi Watts coming out uh, in December. We have um, Seabird with Kristen Stewart coming out in December. Um, and then we have some genre movies that are really funny. We have a movie called Gretel and Hansel coming out in January and Bad Education, uh, which was brought out of Toronto, coming out soon. Those are, those are some of the highlights, certainly a bunch more, but those are some of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. So there you go. Uh, well, we certainly look forward to uh, seeing what's coming up next. Brian Cavanaugh-Jones, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations uh, on Honey Boy. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to all of you at home for watching. Make sure you click the like and subscribe button below. And make sure you visit us at goldderby.com for all the latest Oscar news.